I, I was from a very, very small provincial town in the UK where the cinema would show E.T. in like 2005. It was like 24 years behind when it got released because it was so small, one screen. Um, so cinema wasn't really part of my life. It begins in, in the first episode with uh, a man that um, has to say goodbye to his ex-wife and, and his, his only child they're leaving to to emigrate to another country and he's um, a recovering alcoholic he hasn't drank for a number of years and then after saying goodbye to his child he um, he takes a drink for the first time in, in many years and has the night from hell and um, and when he wakes up uh, the next morning he uh, puts a bag of clothes together and he leaves uh, England, he travels to Northern Ireland on a boat and starts to make his way down to Southern Ireland. And in, in, the audience have no idea why he, and to try and remember some of his history. What interested me was what I felt I had in common with the character and how I could bring parts of myself to her. Um, and there's always a very supportive environment with Shane. So I knew that while the subject matter was difficult at times, that it would be easy to navigate with Shane because he creates a brilliant environment for you to feel safe and explore things that need to be discussed and talked about that maybe you don't get the chance to do on other shows. But when it came to the virtues, um, I knew rather than it being a soundtrack, it needed to be a score. Um, because when you look at something like This Is England that I did previously as a series, that is looking at a very specific time and the music was incredibly important to the characters and you know, they were almost the way they looked was because of a certain kind of music and a certain kind of philosophy. Now all the original music was composed by PJ Harvey and I would say it's, it's probably the most score-like uh, series that I've had rather than it being a soundtrack if that makes sense. The thing I love about the television format is that that whatever size the story becomes or needs to be, television can accommodate that. Now the only downside for me with television is if something becomes successful, the lure is to keep writing when you've run out of stories. And I, that, that's the only thing I'd be afraid of. And It's concrete in what it is. And I, it, that's an infectious uh, um, thought to, to stop when it's good. And you want to make it brilliant and you don't want to like that thrash it out until it becomes less of a thing. I'm, uh, you know, I think, I think I'm going through a phase at the moment, a massive phase of watching documentary series. I mean, it's maybe because I've been working on a drama. I probably can't watch drama, but uh, I don't know if you've got anything in particular you've been... I don't know. I've, I've got a few children, so it's normally whatever they want to watch. So when they're gone to bed, I suppose, a few documentaries. I'm trawling through Netflix is a real chore, but <laughs> <laughs> it's one of Cayman's favourite pastimes. Um, I like Stranger Things, that's what I was watching with the kids. Um, yeah, Stranger Things is a great one. And it's my first ever television festival, and it's honestly like a, a breath of fresh air. It feels vibrant and alive and, and really exciting. And it's my first festival ever, so I'm super excited, and I think it's brilliant. <laughs> Love it. <laughs>